So yes, I've taken a significant amount of THC, marijuana, 225 to 240 uh, milligrams of THC, and it's beginning to hit me. I have not taken a amount like that, possibly ever. I'm trying to think back whether three or four years ago I may have pushed that limit, but anyway, um, I'm recording this because um, I think I can still possibly make some sense. And I can still operate, um, you know, the mouse and, uh, you know, the computer stuff that I can actually record something. And uh, maybe for all you, it could be amusing and interesting to see Bernard trying to speak while he's quite stoned. And I know I'm going to get a lot more stoned than this, but... Um, I'm definitely on... Um, Downward swing is the wrong sort of thing to say. It's not downward swing. I'm definitely reaching the point of where my ability to actually make any sense to me, you, anybody is beginning to come to an end. And I'm posting this just because um, maybe some of you need to see that um, it's not a bad thing being a 57-year-old man and getting stoned. And enjoying the freedom that it gives you in your mind. And for me, now that marijuana is legal and I can speak about all this stuff legally and I can, you know, express my views in that, it is a wonderful place. I live in my mind way too much. I go down rabbit holes all the time. I am in a constant, my waking life is a constant battle with my brain trying to figure out what's going on, where it's going on, figure out something new. And, oh God, it's exhausting. I, um, I read papers on cosmology just because they occupy enough of my mind that I can't think about it, this stuff. I can see how the world is screwed up, and as much as I tried, I wasn't able to actually make the difference I wanted to make. <sighs> Everyone allows me to sort of forget about the fact that the world is going to hell. And I'm not going to make the world worse. I'm trying to make the world better, but I can't, ex you know, put the amount of my life that I put into it anymore because it was going to kill me. It came close to killing me. <sighs> Thank God. Marijuana is now available. And yes, I am very stoned here. So I'm hoping that this makes any sense at all to any of you, but um, it's been a godsend for me. It's helped me find the peace in my life, helped me stop the incessant demands of my mind to tell, you know, my brain to keep saying you have to fix the world because the world's going to hell and just accept the fact the world is going to hell and hopefully there's enough of us that can do things just a little bit better that we won't have the worst of the fucking worst of the world the very fact that the united states elected trump the very fact that austria is becoming a dictatorship the very fact that russia invaded ukraine 20 years of me telling people Putin is a bad man. Putin should not be in anywhere near close levers of power because this is a man who has absolutely no understanding of how to govern and is a narcissistic evil man whose only desire is self-aggrandizement. All of that, I can't deal with all of it. I can't fix it. I'm me and 
I'm just this guy in Victoria and I can't fix it all. And maybe I just need to accept that the world five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years from 50 years from now, is just going to be a worse place than it has been. And I feel like since, since the fall of the Berlin Wall and that moment of, holy crap, maybe the world can be a better place. There was like four or five or six years of like hope that we we're actually headed towards being civilized, grown up people who can actually go, okay, yeah, we don't have to be assholes to each other. And sure, we may need to, you know, cut back on stuff and not have the best of everything that we could possibly have because we need to figure out how to fix the shit for the future. I honestly came to believe that, yay, maybe we can. Because the Cold War sucked. The 1980s sucked. Waking up most mornings understanding that well, we weren't blown up last night. Living with that. Living with Ronald Reagan and idea of we can nuke the planet to peace. That was a stress. And a, the re how relieved I was when the Cold War came to an end. And yes, it, I'm okay. A conversation I had with my one aunt, Sabina who lived uh, for 12 years in a Soviet labor camp. And this is during the Reagan era. And she said, it's only because the United States is so virulently anti the Soviet Union, because Reagan is pushing up this, you, you know, this conflict that the Soviet Union can continue. As soon as, as, soon as the United States were to remove its pressure on the Eastern Bloc, the Eastern Bloc would simply collapse. And it did collapse, not because the United States removed the pressure, which it should have, but because it was an unsustainable system. And we had this moment of maybe we can do things differently. And now it's 2023 and apparently not. Apparently, we have anti-maxers. Apparently, we have people wanting crazy ideas and that, and just like, just be grown-ups. Accept the fact that the people around you, that you need to occasionally give a bit to the people around you, that you have to work with the people around you, that you have to be a decent human, you have to relate to others. Oh my God, the truck protesters, the anti-vaxxers, the Putinites, the whole. It's depressing to understand that maybe 30, 40% of the population would prefer a world that has absolutes that don't exist, but give them boundaries, no matter how bad it is. The thing is, People in Germany voted for Hitler and they got a lower standard of living. People in Germany suffered from day one that Hitler was elected. They had a worse life. But the order that he brought, the sense of, you know, of, oh, you don't need to be so upset about the world around you. We will build a better Germany. No, he didn't. He made Germany worse every day. The Nazis under Hitler did nothing to make the world a better place for the Germans on any level ever. And the problem is we have a large portion of the population that are willing to support this. We look in the United States and we see the people who supported Trump. How can you support a man like him? Canada, we have people support Pierre Polyev. I mean, yes, we're in a country where the alternatives are, I mean, we have the most incompetent Canadian Prime Minister of all time, um, who is useless and crappy. I mean, if we're going to have a centre-right um, Prime Minister, 
Jesus Christ, bring back Stephen Harper. Let him lead the Liberals. He couldn't possibly do as badly as the current one. We live in a world of shit. And yes, I'm very stoned, and this is rambling all over the place. And I'm 10 minutes into this, and yeah, I'm going to post this, because uh, I'm curious to see who will watch this, who will comment on it, and see where it's at. And maybe I'll try and record another one, if I'm still capable of recording anything, say an hour. Because I... Yeah, it's I've taken enough THC that I'm I can see um, the inability to do anything. Anyway, hopefully this is at least humorous to some of you.